you may you may have you probably saw this uh, render poking around. It caught my attention. I mean, this is a really this is a slick look right here. Of course, we still have the Apple Car rumors leading to renders and new conversations between Apple and other automakers, mm -hmm. not just Hyundai, not just Kia. Kia, like a lot of people, it's a very uh, it's a tough topic. It's a tough. If you were an automaker and you had to decide, okay, do I sign up with Apple? Do I deliver a hundred thousand vehicles for them, while at the same time, they become well aware of this business, this process, and then slowly work to cut me out of the deal, right? Yeah. That's kind of the way it goes. Like especially if it's at the tail end, Apple is on the front end of this deal. In other words, all the brand recognition, all the clout, all that stuff, they don't have the manufacturing side of it, at least not yet. And it's, as Tesla has proven, it's difficult to do that part of it. But if they get this intimate relationship with a pre-existing company, does it benefit that company in the long run? And is it worth the, oh, I don't know, what would it be, a couple billion dollars up front? Well, yeah, three point six billion would be what it would be for for Hyundai. If it's close as well to any other Hyundai vehicle, which one are people going to pick? The Apple version of it? Mm -hmm. What kind of contracts are going to exist as far as all the R and D that goes into fabricating this one-off vehicle? Can Hyundai then use certain aspects and components, or is that completely off limits? Mm -hmm. You can see how tough this is. Now, with smartphones and Apple working with companies like Foxconn, for the most part, they're not competing for the same customer. If Foxconn wants to get another customer, they got to find another Apple to manufacture on their behalf. And they're not making their own phones. That's what I mean. They don't slap Foxconn on it. Yep. Now, it's a totally different business. There's not that many automakers. And so it just complicates the situation when you're retailing the same product that you're manufacturing for another company who plans to retail too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so initially the reports were around Hyundai and, and particularly the Kia plant in Georgia, so it could be made in the U.S. And the initial commitment level that's been rumored is 100,000 cars, $3.6 billion. But recently, a number of Japanese car companies have come into the mix and their, their stock price has been elevating as rumors have emerged that Apple may go that direction instead, and that there are some Japanese automakers that might have the bandwidth and might need the, the boost right now, including makers like Mitsubishi and Nissan, hmm. who are listed here. Now, for their part, Mitsubishi came out and said, uh, we're gonna rule ourselves out when they were approached for, for comment. I don't know why that is. Could be that they just won't be silent, which Apple tends to appreciate. But it also could be that they just don't want to be involved in such a deal. There are many that believe that this would be a bad deal for whichever automaker signs up for it. I'm, I mean, it could go either way. The other company, Subaru, they also said, uh, we're going to rule ourselves out. But the remainder actually didn't state one way or the other. Among Japan's car makers, Nissan probably has the right solution for a non-automaker seeking to enter the EV market. You know, Nissan has had success with, I guess it's its Leaf product. It has an EV car already on the market, been on the market for a long time. The Japanese automaker has developed with a French partner, Renault, a common EV platform that can be used to develop distinct branded products. So maybe this is the company that Apple's talking to. Now, I'm not suggesting Apple's gonna put their badge on a, on a, on a Leaf and call it a day, but those platforms matter. What's underneath all of the, the sort of visual aspects of the car and being able to build on top of something. Now, the other rumor as part of this article is uh, the driverless component or autonomous component. Uh, a CNBC report claimed earlier that this vehicle will not be designed to have a driver and that the target is a 2024 20, timescale. So that all sounds impossible at this point. Yeah. But uh, if you look at the the render from above, I think that thing's looking like a type of car I might want to drive anyways. Dude, how cool is this render here? I might not want to be driven in such a thing because it's like ev that render right there is like everything you want your Tesla to be. Yes. And 
I know oftentimes when it comes to having an actual car, it just doesn't work that shape. Like getting into the back seat might not work properly to get that crazy slope to it. But yes, this is a very, if they could do anything, well, it sort of looks like a shortened version of my Taycan, like a coupe version of my Taycan. Mm -hmm. But as you know, how do you get any leg room in the rear, Will? I mean, unless you Apple just... Apple will figure it out. Unless you just don't need a, a really a strong backseat road trip type vehicle. Once you go coupe, because, I mean, if you look at... Bring up the Roadster right now. The, the Roadster is kind of the same silhouette. Look at this right here. 2.0 or... Yeah, 2.0, 2.0. It's kind of the same silhouette as as the Apple Apple car render that we're looking at there. Maybe a little more aggressive around the headlights, but it's a similar shape. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Yeah, I, I think so. The white one there looks wild. The white and black one right there, that looks so futuristic. Mm -hmm. now, unfortunately, this car doesn't exist, but I actually should do a quick shout out for the video I put on Unbox Therapy. Uh, just put it out this morning, uh, ordering up the new Model S version 2, I suppose, 2021 redo. And they redid the interior, and it's looking like a spaceship, and it's supposed to have this crazy acceleration and all the rest of it. That is supposed to show up in March. We'll see if Elon can pull it off or not, because I'm going to compare it to the Taycan Turbo S. And you know what, Will? I'll be ready when Apple finally puts this thing out, too. Mm -hmm. I highly doubt it's going to look that fast when Apple does it, but, you know, we can dream. We can hope. Yes. Today's sponsor, new sponsor to the show, Stitch Fix. This is a kind of cool website, Will, where, yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to upgrade their look, but don't have the time, don't want to, uh, you know, it's, it could be intimidating trying to pick all these different items and things like this, and you got a lot going on in your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you hop on Stitch Fix, and you put in some specifics about yourself, which you which you sort of set up. And this is kind of like a a digital, like a a tech driven version of having your your very own stylist that looks at your unique body type, your preferences, which will evolve over time, and then hooks you up with the right fits for you for a variety of different looks. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you go back, uh, go back to the last page and go click on men at the top, I just want to show you some of the different options. You see the active guy on the left? Like, this is kind of where I'm at, right? I like a comfortable fit. That's you. It might be me. I, yeah. I, I like to have uh, comfort around the waistband, you know? Uh -huh. I like to have soft materials, and I don't want to be restricted when I flex in any direction. I don't yeah. want to feel you my clothes. Be free. Yeah, I need to be free. You know? But the guy next to him is not bad either, the athleisure guy, which is another look you might go for because at least he's still got a flexible pant. Now, as you scroll through to the next one, you'll see you can step it up to casual, and I believe there's even another look represented there. Cozy might be even better. I don't know. He looks comfortable. And then the last one they show is weekend where they, you know he's going out to – cut a Christmas tree, whatever. I wanted to know from you, actually, which of these looks, where would you fit in terms of your day-to-day? -day? My day-to-day -day would probably be uh, active. Active, yeah. I, I, I like think that's going to be the same one as me as well. Uh, but anyways, you can get any look to fit your lifestyle. You get to try on absolutely everything. Gets sent to you a package. You, you only pay for what you like. So it's not a commitment from that standpoint. And you can instantly buy the items that, uh, that show up that, you, uh, that you're into. There's no subscription required. You get to shop instantly. They've got this, like over a thousand brands, 800 plus size and fit combinations. Waists from 28 to 48. And so they're using all their, uh, all their tech and all the features inside the app to match you with the best look you can set your price point it's all kinds of stuff and i at first i was like oh are, okay so they're trying to move their own product their own brand but no it's actually popular brands that you know if you scroll down to the bottom you're gonna see it's like new balance is over there you have public rec i've uh, had some of their pants before in the past uh uh the north face is on there like these ralph lauren like these are known brands over here oh yeah and uh they they have shoes and belts and stuff. It's so, a full look. Yeah. And so like you're... They, 
you know, you don't just get like pants and a shirt. No, you get man. The full outfit. I don't think it's possible. I can't look this stylish. I would need, personally, it would be the effort and the energy involved with the extra items. Mm -hmm. If if somebody just if it just all showed up, I'd be like, perfect, okay, fine, you know. Yeah. But as far as on the daily, it's uh, it can be tough to put together the you know put together the whole thing. Yeah. And the thing is, people are right now. A lot of people they've been in lockdown. We're getting ready to come out this lockdown. Do you even have the right outfits? You no, know. No. You've been not, in these PJs me. exclusively. Anyway, you can get started today at stitchfix.com slash later, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash later for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash later. You can also just click the link in the description if that's easier for you. Uh, don't forget the Lou later portion for your 25% off. Today's second sponsor is Manscaped, who we've talked about many times here on the show. This is big news for those that have been negligent as far as their personal hygiene is concerned. You can see here the, the performance package listed. Of course, they have the world famous, uh, what do they call it, the Lawnmower 3.0, mm -hmm. which is their, uh, well, they got the Weed Whacker now, which I actually need. I got to get up in the nose hairs a little bit. I, yeah. They didn't send me this one yet. Uh, listen up, Manscaped. Send me the Weed Whacker. I want to test that out, too. Look at the, the dual-edge blade. You know, Will, you get a little bit older, all of a sudden these hairs start popping up. You're like, where, where did that come I know, from? where did these come from? Yeah, what, what's going on here? I got to take care of this. Uh -huh. Well, the same thing goes with their main product, the, the lawnmower. They engineered this thing for all the sensitive regions of your body in such a fashion. I mean, I've used it. I can tell you. I don't know how... They managed to finally put together a razor that isn't gonna chew you up for chew you up for breakfast. <laughs> and yeah. you know, this they use a ceramic blade, a little charge dock to it, maximum skin safe performance is what they call it. There's a light on there so you can see what mm -hmm. you're doing. It's right inside the razor. So Manscaped is gonna keep you uh, you know, all looking nice and tight. Cleaned up. Yeah, and all cleaned up. Very clean. And nice and tight. And they got other products on there as well. Including, uh, you know, what is it? The the ball reviver preserver. It's all kinds of goods. It's ball deodorant right there. So you're gonna you're gonna groom yourself. That's what you're gonna do. I instruct you right now. Please, it's time to groom yourself. All plus, right. plus now is the right time because you get twenty percent off plus free shipping. All you have to do is go to manscapecom Lou. Look good, smell good, feel good. With Manscaped, go to manscaped.com slash Lou to get 20% off and free shipping. Or, once again, click the link in the description to take advantage of that. I'm sure you saw this next story, Willie Do Xiaomi's new concept phone with the waterfall edges on all sides. Not just on the, the usual sides, but the top and bottom now as well. Because mm. you have to. Mine as well. It's a waterfall in every direction. Yeah. Now, I saw some takes on social media. Some people said... How where am I going to hold this thing? What am I going to do? What about those corners? Oh, right. The edge displays. Mm. You know, when you... This one wraps touch. like no other. Obviously, you can't put a case on it. No. There's no case. There's no grip. So I hear you on all that. But that's not... I mean, this is a concept. It's, it's meant to push the boundaries. That's what they're going for here. And I personally would love to get my hands on it. I can't speak to the functionality if I'm going to be frustrated touching the side. But I like to see the application of new hardware based on the capabilities of that hardware. I want to see it implement. I want to know what's possible sometimes. So I would love to take a look at such a thing. They say it has a, a deep 88-degree waterfall curve. There, this, of course, also leaves no room for ports or buttons. Or buttons, yeah. But in the future, we all know those things don't exist anymore. There's no ports and buttons in the future. I hate to break it to you if you didn't consider it. Uh, what else can I say about it? It apparently it features countless breakthroughs in glass bending and laminating technology. See, this is important an important consideration. It's not just that the OLED underneath is capable of flexing, it's that the glass that wraps around the waterfall is also bending. Mm. You see, that's not easy stuff to do, Will. No. Can't bend glass. 
Breakthroughs in glass bending and laminating technology. I mean, it's probably one of these hybrid glasses, obviously. It represents the sum of 46 groundbreaking patents. So you got my attention. I want to hold in my hand 46 groundbreaking patents. So yeah. Xiaomi, if you're watching this, send over to Prototype. You can accompany it if you need to with the briefcase and the handcuff on the briefcase. Do what you got to do because I want to check this out. A lot of people, they think it's just a concept, but Xiaomi, they came out and said, no, 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 it's a real, it is a concept, but it's a real device, working device in our hands right now. So I presume they're on the way to unbox therapy next. Apparently, Apple is working on fixing its flimsy iPhone charger cables. I'm sure you've seen this in the past. This is kind of happens to all cables, not just Apple iPhone cables. It, it seems that those ones always get the bad rap, but... It can happen to all cables where you get the weird bending and fraying right around where the connector is just before the connect. There you go. That's the one you're talking. I mean, everyone has seen this before. The fraying cable, which is terrifying. You will see people, they still use it. There's like one strand of metal saying it. it's terrifying. <laughs> it always yeah, freaks me scary. out. Whenever I see it, I'm, I'm like, fire hazard. And especially it's like under the pillow or something. I'm like, geez. Yeah. Anyway, apparently Apple's going to fix it once and for all, or maybe not, because they might get rid of the cable completely. But this patent seems to indicate that they at least are thinking about fixing such a problem. Now, as you know, Will, on some of the some of their products, including uh, the professional products like that 6K display, it comes with a Thunderbolt cable, which is braided and a lot different than what they ship to you or give you with the iPhone. So they have been working towards a more substantial cable elsewhere now this, this one, one might uh well that looks like a third party one that's the old thunderbolt cable it's probably hard to find you probably have to go to their website but anyway yeah they make they make some pretty hefty thunderbolt cables which makes sense that is a cable that has a tremendous amount of throughput your phone on the other hand it's mostly just for charging and not even necessarily that fast at times mm. so they tend to be a little bit flimsier but Apple has engineered through, or, or at least patented this idea of making the cable locally stiffer. The strain relief sleeve also makes the cable thicker at the ends. Uh, they essentially designed a cable that has denser material toward the end and then tapers off. And there's an image to demonstrate such a thing. Now, the main question here is whether or not we ever see such a thing exist because Apple has been rumored to potentially move away from having a port at all kind of like that xiaomi phone we just looked at uh that they could go portless for the iphone 13 or whatever they end up calling the next version i'm not saying that's going to happen but certainly they've avoided usb type c for a really long time where mm -hmm. you know it might be tempting to just jump over it completely and go right to portless but they could they could still implement this technology with the MacBooks. Yes. Which those ones get frayed and bent. Maybe a little bit less, but they do also get frayed and bent. Uh, Huawei has shown off their new Mate X2. Well, actually, they haven't. It's a leak. They haven't shown it off. Someone else has shown it off, but it's been shown off in this leak. It is a notchless design on the inside, which is interesting. No front-facing camera by the looks of it on the inside. At least not anything you can see there in the render. You do have a dual front-facing camera on the outside in the folded kind of uh, position. This obviously is very reminiscent of Samsung's folding product. They have appear they appear to have shifted away from the folding design that folds from the outside. Yep. This is a clamshell which opens to the larger display as opposed to. This is so hard to describe the way in which these things have folded, but the Mate previously has been a thing that offered a really large display in the closed mode because of the way it opened in reverse of the Galaxy Fold. But a, a lot of people had questions about the durability of this, seeing as how the external display, the exposed portion was the softer one. Yeah. Much like on the on the Z Fold products from, from Samsung. So in Samsung's design, by closing it up, you're protecting the most fragile component. And they seem to have fixed the problem with the small external display. They were able to jam a much bigger one in there. So it seems like the right implementation at this point. And it looks like Huawei agrees here. So 
The Mate X2 adopts a similar form factor. Uh, apparently, it's quite thin and lightweight compared to other foldable devices. No exact numbers yet. It remains to be seen where and how it will be sold. Obviously, we have questions about Android and uh, what you know whether or not it will ever reach outside of China. But even if it doesn't, you have the next generation of Z Fold, the Z Fold 3 and Flip 3 to look forward to. Oh. We have uh, a new report here uh, uh, from Ice Universe, actually. And he has indicated that we can expect to see the new folding products from Samsung in the summer. We'll have to wait till the summer, which feels a, feels a long way off, but it's really not. We're almost through this thing. Well, this winter thing that happens yeah. once a year around these parts. I'm not saying I want it to be over. We just got the rink going. I've been skating outdoors with the kids, man. It's unreal. It's unbelievable. Uh -huh. I'm out there with the fresh air. Like, I'm built for that. Yeah. But still, I like the seasons changing. I told you this before. Yeah. I like the seasons changing, the time passing and the cold and the warm and all the rest of it. But anyway, uh, these devices apparently are going to hit uh, somewhere around July. And we have some, I guess we have some interesting developments here. Apparently, the uh, price point is still going to be premium, but Samsung may drop some other folding products at a more value-oriented uh, price point. So that's good. Also, it's likely going to have Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 in both devices, oh. the Flip and the Fold. So that's good. And for some reason, the rumor here is that the internal display will be a little bit smaller, 7.55 inches down from 7.59. But good news, everyone seems to think it's going to support S Pen input, which I think, oh, as okay. I've told you before could be a really cool implementation on a bigger display. That would be the place to use the S Pen. As long as you're not digging into the thing and making grooves on the soft material. Yeah. Although it might be, uh, would it be a nub? Like uh, It would probably be a nub. Like a rubber kind of material? Sound like a nub to me. A nub? Okay. I don't know if nub's ever been said on the show previously, but it has now. Now, one potential drawback, for some reason, this rumor also seems to indicate that the camera may not be on par with the S21. I don't know how big of a deal that is. I'm sure it's still going to be great, but you're getting a, you're getting a lot here anyways, and uh, I'm sure it'll be close. Yeah. A new Google Drive desktop app to replace backup and sync and drive file stream clients later this year. Now, you you and I <laughs> oh, whoa. Whoa, I hit it. I hit a chord. You go ahead, Will. I well, struck a chord with you. No, they they used to have like a a sync app. I think it's called Google Drive for it, your It was just called Google Drive. Mac yeah. Or uh, yeah, 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 or yeah. PC and You're so angry. Then right it's now. backup and sync. And no, then we got to download that. No, right now we're on file stream. What? Per, what like mean? On, for the company, we're using file stream. Oh no, but for like us, for thumbnails. Yeah, Google, file stream. It's called. It's not called backup and sync. No, that's what it's called. You yeah. have backup and sync. You're supposed yeah. to have file stream. Did they have a new one now? No, <laughs> it's just it's just the the uh, the drive uh, file stream client is for uh, companies, and backup and sync is for personal. Well, I use that though. Well, you're not supposed to. Well, no. Well, they have that, and then. They're coming out with a new one? They're trying to merge it together because it's confusing. Well, yeah. And the reason I brought it up is because I know you're you're angry about it, and so am I, because it's kind of messy, the thing. It the is. Whole... It's very fragmented. <laughs> I just never expected to hit to strike such a nerve here, but anyway. Well, you know how Lou later is. It's no, I know, I know. We well spend a lot of time ending. in Google Drive. It's just... It's a... <laughs> It's the dumbest story that way we just get, <laughs> we get so, it yeah. gets so inside baseball. Like our lives yeah. are inside of Google Drive. It's so much work that happens in there. And it's, yeah, it can be confusing and fragmented. And, and I like the idea of one singular app. Basically what's happening is they're just merging the two. Hmm. And it's just going to be Google Drive, I believe. It'll work. Yeah, it's going to be called Google Drive for desktop. Now it'll work the same, like, like, uh, file stream, yeah, 
but it's just going to be called Google Drive for desktop, which I remember the days when that's all it was, and it worked fine. Yeah. And and now it's a, it, I don't know, it's a little bit, it can be buggy at times. I really wish this app was, was a bit smoother, but that said, I feel like our use case is a little intense as well. We're constantly uploading and downloading massive files. Yeah, that's so, true. So I'm just going to put that out there, but this thing is integral, integral to our business. And I just thought that this update, there's got to be some other people that have felt our frustrations and are looking for a simplified approach to this thing. One singular app. We don't need to have different names, yeah. personal, business, whatever. Get it else. together. Anyway. <laughs> Police see 60 million in Bitcoin, but can't get the password. We're going to see so many more of these type of stories, man. Uh, this was in Germany. They confiscated 60 million worth of Bitcoin from a fraudster. But the problem was, of course, they couldn't unlock it. He did not give them the password. Now, this guy apparently uh, was able to mine 1,700 Bitcoin a while ago by installing malicious software on a variety of computers that would all be working on his behalf. Un unknowing mm -hmm. to the to the user of that particular PC, in the background it had been it had been mining. Now Bitcoin mining, n n not really working all that well on typical computers these days. So this obviously took place a little while ago, and when it happened, the Bitcoin was not worth anywhere near what it's worth now. So the headline saying sixty million in Bitcoin. When the fraud took place and the guy was imprisoned, it wasn't as this is that's a really weird thing about the punishment because usually when with theft and fraud the amount matters, uh -huh. and so they would have evaluated it at that moment. But now looking back, it's actually yeah the theft is way bigger considering what happened to Bitcoin in the meantime since the guy has been in prison. Now this is one of those things that some crypto fans love to hear. They love to see a type of story. Maybe they don't love it, because in this case, this guy's a criminal. But just the idea of these keys, this code, your coin. Yeah. That kind of ethos. And yeah. here, here you see it playing out. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, they don't, the criminal component is not something anybody really wants. But uh, the password was not provided. And apparently... The prosecutors ensured that the man himself cannot access it. Though you got to believe if he's out of prison now, yeah, he's like, gonna where's my wallet? Try to find a way, right? He can still if he has the keys, he can still get find a way in. So I don't know how they can ensure that he won't be able to uh, get it out. The fraudster had been sentenced to more than two years in jail for covertly installing software on other computers to harness their power to mine. Or produce Bitcoin. It's funny the way this article, Reuters, mine or produce Bitcoin. Never heard it described quite yeah. that way previously. Anyway, we'll see. I don't know if he's going to get his hand. I guess if he gets his hands on it, you would never know. Mm -hmm. You would never know. But the prosecutor sure couldn't get their hands on it. You sent this one to me. Razer's Huntsman V2 analog keyboard. I was like, well, it's just a nice keyboard. Why are you sending me this story? Yeah. But it's actually interesting the way that it works. It is very expensive, $250. But you know, Razer, they've been trying to push out these new types of key switches, Will, which are kind of a take on a mechanical key switch, but there's an optical component to it. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be obviously super fast, but the other feature here is that unlike a mechanical key switch, a typical mechanical key switch, which, which has one point of actuation, this, because you're talking about a sensor that's reading the infrared light, it can tell exactly how far down you've pressed, right. allowing for the potential for it to operate like a joystick in games, where if you're pr uh, pushing your character forward gently, for example, walking slowly, the keyboard would recognize mm. that input as being different from slamming it down, which would be could be different uh, a higher speed. Yeah, so potentially you can... Uh you can crawl mm -hmm. or walk slowly and normal walk and then a run. Now, obviously, the game is going to have to support such a thing. Yeah. But it is an interesting uh, development to imagine that level of detail, that level of kind of nuance between the variety of movement speeds. 
Because, yeah. I mean, a lot of games now, what do you have? You have the shift the key. The shift and W. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> it's all you got. It's not. Oh. It's actually not a lot of... Uh, you have to do a claw hand. Yeah, it's time. actually not that detailed when you think about it. But uh, anyway, there's a little graphic here which kind of shows how it works. It's pretty cool. It's a look at how the optical switch determines the actuation level. And the other thing you can do when you're typing is you can kind of uh, configure the key switch for your style of typing. If you don't want to have a super strong actuation, for example, and and you, you actually miss some key presses because you don't press hard enough, mm. you can make it more sensitive, more sensitive and yeah. not really have to slam it. So it's a pretty cool technology. Uh, I don't know about if the reliability is on the level of the typical mechanical key switch from the likes of Cherry and a variety of other companies that have been doing it forever, but it is cool to see nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of gaming, Activision has confirmed another Call of Duty coming this year. You know, they're just printing money with the Warzone stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. And yeah. then they have apparently, the zombies mode. Apparently there's never been more Call of Duty players than there are right now. Really? So they're hitting a peak and obviously Warzone a big wow. part to play. Some people thought Warzone was cooking so hot that there would be no need for another release. But uh, on a Q4 2020 earnings call, the Activision CFO, Dennis Durkin, he talked about Call of Duty and said they have a strong premium release planned for Q4 2021. And they will migrate the existing COD community to that game. So a premium, a premium game coming as a companion. Warzone is still going to be there, obviously. Durkin said the franchise will benefit from a full year of Warzone, driving upgrades to our premium content and incremental in-game player investment. I actually saw a popular YouTuber Vicstar was talking about how he quit. I don't know if he's back, but he quit playing Warzone because he was upset about cheaters in oh, the yeah. game. And it, it was funny because I was looking on a Twitter feed and actually the BBC picked up the story and, and, and was like, popular COD player quits the game you can see it made it made made the news uh quits the game because it's saturated with cheating i think it made it on the bbc specifically <laughs> but it random. looks like you wrote what did you write cheater yeah vic star cheating bbc anyway he quit and he was a big time he was doing big numbers by the way on the game yeah. And so it was a kind of a big deal that he was going to quit. Obviously, everyone in his channel wants to see him play it, but he was frustrated with what was going on with Warzone specifically. Uh, Activision, I know, reached out to him because I saw him mention that on Twitter as well, that he's in touch with them and they're trying to sort it out mm -hmm. and they're going to try to get to the bottom of whatever exploits exist in the game right now. I haven't played Warzone in a while, so I can't speak to it. Yeah. But, but this guy has a lot of accolades with uh, Warzone. Mm -hmm. Like the he did like achievements that yeah. no one has ever done before. He no. was first of doing a lot of things. A super nice guy too. I actually hung out with him. Uh, oh yeah, yeah at the, one of those creator summits in New York. So oh. I can speak to his character nice as well. Nice guy. Yeah, very nice guy and one heck of a one heck of a COD player. Oh yeah. Uh, how about this? Tesla showed off the world's biggest die casting machine. Oh. It, think of it like you know those little die cast cars, Will. Yeah, those Hot Wheels. Yeah, those. Though, imagine at some point Elon was like, "Wait so a sec." So he's making a real die. He's like, "Wait a sec. What's the difference? Can't we just do a bigger one of that? Won't it? Won't it save yeah. time?" Well, yeah, that's the idea here. Actually, this thing makes the uh, two pieces of the frame of the car that nice. that used to previously be seventy separate pieces, trying to streamline the process of of uh, well, manufacturing vehicles. These are cast outside the Fremont facility, though machines like this are likely going to be at their other plants. They had to put it outside because it's so big, this machine. They just put a roof on it and left it outside. Uh, now I'm reading through the comments here. We can cast front and rear vehicle underbodies in a single piece each down from 70 plus parts for the same sections previously. And then we have some comments from a, a couple of uh, uh, critics. One says there is a reason cars don't get manufactured this way. Another person says the cult pets Elon infinitely on this. Look, numbskulls, 
Every manufacturer can do this, but there's a key reason why not. Called an accident, except for that, it's great. You're trusting a guy infi so infinitely cheap, he was putting non-stainless bolts on the battery's undercarriage. Jesus. So this guy, he's going for the jugular. That's a Johnny Cage. Uh, but then you have another person, incredible piece of material science. This is a huge saving in factory complexity and removes hundreds of operations and tolerance challenges. I can just tell you making cars is hard. And yes, I know Elon is has been uh, looking for efficiencies wherever possible, trying to figure this thing out. And I'm sure there are benefits and drawbacks to every single selection of manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Here's one we haven't talked about yet. Jeff Bezos stepping down from the CEO position at Amazon. I found this article on Wired uh, seeming to, to speculate that Bezos is too busy to be the CEO of Amazon. And I kind of hear that. So there's a... Actually, who's the, the writer here? Stephen Levy. He has been around Bezos and other tech executives for a long time. And actually, in this particular article talks about a previous a previous uh, interview in which Bezos said, hey, I pretty much don't do anything that I don't think is improving the world or improving mankind. I don't want to work on anything in the future. I'll give you the actual quote here. I won't spend any time in my life working on anything I don't think is important. I'm just not going to. I don't need to. That was actually in 2018, I believe, and it was at a Blue Origin launch event. Now we know that Bezos and and Elon Musk have been going back and forth as far as some space stuff is concerned, and they both have space ambitions. Bezos through Blue Origin and Musk through uh, SpaceX. SpaceX, and of course uh, Starlink, and uh, but but also the other player, Virgin Galactic, with oh, yeah. uh, Branson. So yeah, it's yeah. like there's a there's a renewed interest in space and. I'm reading through this article, say, hey, wait, you're the CEO of one of the most important companies in the world, and you're too busy for that, and you're only 57 years old. How old are these other guys? How old is Tim Cook? Can we get a quick, a quick peek at that? I know Elon is younger. He's not quite 57, but like Cook is 60, and he's, uh, he's doing Apple. Elon is 49. He's not quite as old as Bezos, but... It did. You're sitting there thinking, why are you stepping down right now? And we saw he put in charge the AWS guy. That's an area of their business growing rapidly outside of the just the e-commerce stuff, selling things. Uh, and then another speculation pops up in this article I'm reading about how there's been increased pressure on Amazon and others and Bezos himself, tech executives from Congress and the questioning. And you remember he had to show up and sit yeah. there through that whole thing and say, well, yeah, we're collecting data, but blah, blah, blah. And Tim Cook has to sit for seven hours with Epic. And so the writer of this article reflects on that initial comment that he that that Bezos isn't interested in working on anything that yeah, I remember this. So we were we were rating their backgrounds, who had the best background yeah. during that antitrust hearing. It was Pachai, right? Did we vote for Pachai? I think Pichai has the best background, yeah. I, I was very upset with Apple's. It was super generic. And and uh, Zuckerberg is just on like a, a webcam or it yeah. feels like he's looking at a laptop, which is fair. But the other guys have a real sort of flattened camera image. Yeah. Uh, the camera's on tripod further away. So it's a question of also framing. Is it? Is it? I mean, you've watched Unbox Therapy. It's kind of like yeah. from the chest up and... Pachai kind of nailed that. Mm -hmm. With the, you see slightly the hands. You see okay. slightly the hands and posing. So, yeah, he he's, he had a pretty nice set over there. But Bezos is probably second place. So yeah. Anyway, he doesn't want to do that stuff anymore. That's the speculation. Is like right. You know, I want to get to space, and I was sitting here thinking, man, if he really wants to take on Elon with the space stuff, what better way? And then letting somebody else handle the day to day at Amazon. Now he's still going to be involved in Amazon. Obviously, he has a significant role there. But let's say you just free up some time for yourself, and you have built one of the most successful companies, period, ever, and you bring that same mentality 
to Blue Origin. And I believe he's got... Does he not have another project as well that I'm forgetting right now? Oh, uh, he's also got... He also bought the Washington Post, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. He's got other stuff going on that he can, uh, he can probably go ahead and focus on. And at 57 years, maybe he thinks that's a better move. And maybe he just personally enjoys working on that other stuff as well. But if I'm Elon, I'm sitting there saying... Oh, you get to just do space now? Because I got to fund every all my space stuff. I got to sell all these cars still. I got to figure all that out. Yeah, that's not fair. So, but I'm sure they're all going to find time. And, and, and Bezos is eight years older. So Elon's got that little extra time there to figure that out. But it's going to be fun to see what happens and what Bezos ends up doing, see, seeing as how he probably did this to free up a little bit of time and to avoid... That, that nasty CEO role and having to show up in front of those questions every mm -hmm. so often. All right, here's the last one. You sent it to me. I don't know. It's so weird. I don't know, yeah. man. It's so weird. I don't... At first, I was like, how do I know if this is real? And then I saw the comments, Gorilla Glue commenting back, and I was like, oh, wow, I guess it is real. Uh, this is a viral TikTok video of a woman who accidentally puts Gorilla Glue spray adhesive in her hair instead of um, a, a hair adhesive designed for hair. Yes. And then goes on to TikTok and says, my hair is look at my hair. Now. I can't. Not much, no. I can't change my hair. I can't wash my hair. My hair has looked like when this for a month. Hair, I like to, you know, finish it off with a little got to be glue spray. Oh, you know, no. Just to keep <laughs> she it reached for the wrong glue. Well, I didn't have any more got to be glue spray, so I used this. So she, it was wrong? Like she gorilla made a mistake? Or was she bad, going bad, for Gorilla glue? And then, okay, yo, so... Look. Well, My first of all, you can see her hair really, is now you know just molded to her head. I've washed my hair 15 times. <laughs> and it don't she washed her hair 15 times and it won't come out. She used, she must have used a lot so of it. Like this. I guess, ever, you know. Ever run out and to be I, was she using don't gloves, ever, maybe? How'd she get her... Her hands. Like I'm, it's a lot of speculation, man. Hey, uh, anyway, apparently there is a product. Hair has been like all right, the product she references in the clip got to got to be glued, blasting freeze spray, is a product that a lot of people know, and okay. it's it's gonna do it's gonna give you that effect, but it's gonna wash out. Right. All right. There is another product called. Gorilla Snot Gel. Not and Gorilla Glue. Exactly. Gorilla Snot Gel is different than Gorilla Glue, which we all know Gorilla Glue. It's at the hardware store. That stuff is serious. And actually, the Gorilla Snot Gel looks nothing like Gorilla Glue, the container. So I don't think that would be easy to confuse. But anyway, the product does exist, but she reached for Gorilla Glue. I don't know how you pick it up in the store. I don't know why it was next to your other beauty products. Maybe it was just in the cupboard for a really long time, and she was like, you know what? Yeah, it's Gorilla Glue. I'm going to try it out. Yeah. I see it's heavy duty, but I'm going to try it out. But either way, if it's real, the consequence here is that the hair, her hair is likely damaged and ruined. And uh, gorilla, the funniest part, Gorilla Glue came and commented on the post and said to use some rubbing alcohol and water in a spray bottle, a hair dryer, and a comb. But since you've had it like that for a month, your hair could be damaged. Well, yeah, oh. I, assume, I assume so. And it's going to take some time to come off since it's been there for a month. So it may not come out at all. That hair may be messed up. But... I suppose this could happen to anyone. If you're in a pinch and you try to do the DIY and you try to do, you try to get it done with what you've got. Now, I never did it in this fashion here, but I have done similar things where I'm like, maybe I could just get pa get by with some duct tape or a zip tie over here. Yeah. And you know it's not the right thing for the job, but you reach for it because it, it's there. Yeah. When you need it, this is an extreme version of that. So I understand the the idea of it the motivation to try it but in this case obviously 
the label is your friend, particularly anytime you're putting something on on or near your body. Yeah. Yeah. 